All right, Shalom. First of all, I'd like to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and double honors to your apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to the Arkham out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Uh, the title of this video, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, but, um, you know, it's on the topic of famine. Okay, and without further ado, I'm going to go straight into this, man. Um, so this is Haggai, the first chapter and the tenth verse. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And when you read on, this scripture shows you that the Lord can create a famine. And it's not far from the Lord to do that, as he's done it in the past. A popular example of that is in the time of Joseph. And there's seven years uh, famine, seven years good harvest. And a few other instances within the scriptures when you search them out. So the point I wanted to make is that the Lord can destroy the perception of always being able to find food. Especially in Europe, in the modern world, most of the food is imported uh, internationally. All right, because of the... The, the soil is basically crap soil, man. However, the Lord can control where rain falls and where rain don't fall. So if rain don't fall on the rest of the world or certain places, then guess what? There ain't going to be no imported food. An account of this, or an example of an account, is in Amos 4, in verse 7. Where it says, and also I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the piece whereupon it was not withered. So, Salakia, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two all three cities wandered into unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So the first point is that the Lord can control where the the where it rains and where it doesn't rain. The second point I wanted to make is that the Lord causes famine to make Israel call it to heart regarding their sins and repent from it. The majority of the first and second class would never question the famine being possible because of the excessive eating culture, like um, the Americans, they're, they're overweight and obese through, you know, comfort eating and so forth. And even in the UK, a lot of people are obese as well through, through eating whatever they want because of convenience and fast food. But if a famine was to take hold of Europe, as it has done in the past, then the people would be dismayed. Now I'm going to show you another biblical account of a famine that happened to the Israel, the Israelites, namely Judah. The scripture I'm going to use is Jeremiah 14. I will be jumping around a little bit, so forgive me. I'm going to start by reading uh, the first verse to the fourth verse. It says, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, the dearth being the destitution of the land, you know. Uh, it says, verse 2, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And that's a key scripture we use uh, to prove that the Jews have dark skin, okay. But also, when there's a famine, um, when you don't eat or you're hung, you're starving, all right, that means that your skin will get extra dark. Verse three it says, and their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads, and that's indicative of what these um these people living in modern. Europe are going to go through today if there's a famine all the glitz and glamour the lifestyles the flash cars the pride all that will be out of the window 
nothing but empty bellies and regrowth. And all you women, you're going to be undesirable in that day, man. You're going to look like men because all that hair is going to grow back all across your body, your face, everywhere. Verse 4, because the ground is chapped, I mean in the ground is broken, man. You know like how your lips be chapped and cracked open, man? That means there's a hardcore lack of rain or, 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 or nourishment in the, in the land. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. The whole thing's good. But I'm going to jump to uh, verse 10 and read up to 14. So this is verse 10. It says, Thus saith the Lord unto his people, Thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity, iniquity and visit their sins. So the reason why the Lord will create a famine in the land is because of the wickedness that's being done. And said, and then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people for their good. So the Lord basically said to the prophet, look man, don't pray for them. Fuck them. So that shows you you're not supposed to feel sorry for these people. When these famines are breaking out, man, you're not supposed to want to fix everything for them, man, because ultimately it's the Lord that's doing it to them for a punishment or a judgment. All right, this is an article from theguardian.com. It's fairly recent news. It says, Famine looms in four countries as aid system struggles to cope. Experts warn. It says, Famine is looming in four different countries. Uh, second paragraph, it says tens of millions of people in need of food aid in Yemen, South Sudan, Nigeria and Somalia are at the mercy not only of overwhelmed aid system, but the protracted, mainly conflict driven crisis in their own countries. Yeah, it's because of, mainly because of war going on in their countries. The humanitarian leaders say, OK, so the point I wanted to extrapolate from this document is those so-called so South Sudanese. Somalians, Ethiopians, they had our people in captivity, all right? Going back to the, the Kushites, man, that's their, that's their patriarch, the Kushite, uh, Kush, all right? And um, they had us in, in slavery, going back to the Babylonian Empire. Now, are we supposed to feel sorry for them? Are we supposed to weep for these people? No, because it's a judgment from our Heavenly Father. Now, also... Uh, Nigeria going back to um, the Lord when the Lord told um, the Jews to flee unto the mountains those mountains were the interiors of the west coast of Africa right, where the Jews had to flee from Roman persecution okay so over in Nigeria you got a, um, a good majority of those people in the west coast of Africa are Israelites alright however like I was reading earlier, um, we're in a time of prophecy, okay? A time of judgment, all right? Which the prophecies are speaking about famine. So, unless you're a part of the elect over there in Nigeria and wake up to this truth, all right, and believe on Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, then guess what, man? The Lord said don't pray for these people, man, all right? They're going to get uh, jacked up for the wickedness that they've been doing. Uh, this is Matthew 24 and 7, where the Lord tells us about what's going to happen in the last days. So it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse pra uh, places. All right, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And you're clearly seeing these famines in diverse places today as we speak, man. All right, and the news article that we brought out is evidence of that. This is Psalms 107, verse 33. He turneth rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into, a dry, into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. And that's point blank, telling you that the Lord Yehovah Hashem Yehovah Shai is the one that's doing it to you for your wickedness. Not any of these other gods, Buddha, Allah, or any of these other deities out there, man. The Lord 
God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob's the one that's doing it to you, man. We're quickly approaching the time where these nations are going to be calling the Lord Al-Ashadiyah again, all right? Which means demon light power, because the Lord is the one that's destroying these nations and bringing famines on their lands. Through the Spirit of the Lord, us brothers in Great Millstone, we're telling you that it's the Lord that's doing it to you. So these nations, they're going to know that it's the Lord that's doing it to them. And as for you, Jakes, the scripture says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's why we're trying to wake up uh, the elect of Israel, which all goes back to the fear of the Lord. This is an article on Wikipedia, Christianity in Nigeria. It says Christians in Nigeria comprise between 50% and 67% uh, of the population. Christians are dominant in the southern and central region in Nigeria. According to the Pew Research Center, Nigeria has the largest Christian population of any country in Africa, with more than 85 million persons in Nigeria belonging to the church with various denominations. The number of Christians in Nigeria has grown from 21.4% in 1953 to 49.3% in 2010. So the Lord's got a whole lot of so-called Christians that he's got to do away with because the Lord ain't dealing with Christianity, all right? He's dealing with the Hebrew Israelites, man. The Lord didn't come to save everybody. The Father and his Son are two different entities. Both are so-called black and ain't got biblical leprosy. And those people over there in Nigeria are worshipping a white god, which really is the image of the so-called white man, known as Cesare Bourget. These so-called Nigerians, they're the first to get butt hurt when you tell them that the Lord is not a so-called white man. Another point to make is that the word famine throughout the whole Bible, including the Apocrypha, is mentioned 104 times. But how many times did these so-called pastors out there push that the Lord's going to bring famine upon the wicked, uh, the wicked of our people and upon these nations? They don't, because they're all about that prosperity doctrine. And the funny thing is, online you type in the word famine, and you should see it in post-production, that there's actually a website that goes into all the different scriptures regarding the word famine. Verse 12, Then they fast. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. And that happened to our people, Israel, man. All right. The Jews, that happened to the Jews. So for a lot of um, our people who believe or don't believe they're Israelites but are going off, guess what, man? No matter what you do, even if you get a foot kick, kicked up your ass, so to speak, the Lord might have mercy on, you know, the Lord's only going to have mercy on the elect, point blank. And if you're not a part of the elect, guess what, man? The Lord's going to just make you suffer no matter what you do. And a lot of our people want to get spiritual when when push comes to shove. When the Lord does something to you, but the Lord's only accepting the elect, man. If you're outside of the elect, then guess what, man? You, you're you going to just suffer. Verse 13, Then said I, our Lord, God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. All right, and then I'm not going to read the whole thing. Let me read verse 14. Then, said, then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. So when the famine comes, you Benjamites out there, you can go to these different musicians that you call prophets or these different um, people that you, you, know, you say that are anointed by the Lord and you can try and get them to stop the... Stop the famine from happening, man. Stop the destruction. See if it will work. But if you read down, which I'm not about to read it, but, you know, if you read down, you're going to find that that ain't going to work. 
So from here I'd like to read 2nd Ezra 16 and the 19th verse. It says, Behold, famine and plague and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Right, so you're supposed to try and, uh, see, when you see these things, you're supposed to really know that the Lord's doing it for a judgment, man. All right, and if you see those things, you're supposed to repent, man, because you're going to know that the Lord's the one doing it to you for a reason. All right, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. So guess what? The scripture's talking about a time that's coming to you in the time that you're living in, man. This is future prophecy of, of a famine and destruction of the people on the earth, man. All right? Mainly you so-called Americans, man. All right? And you Europeans, man. Across the whole world, people are going to get jacked up for the wickedness that's going on. Especially you Israelites that are wicked, proud, and don't want to repent. Now, if you read on down to the 23rd verse, you'll see it gets a lot worse than what I've mentioned so far. It goes into detail, but I'm not going to read it at this point just for lack of time. So you might be thinking, what are the men of the Lord going to be doing if if there's no food in the earth? Well, guess what, man? This is what the men of the Lord are going to be doing, man. This is Galatians 3 and um, 11. It says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of of Yahweh. It is evident for the just shall live by faith, man. So we ain't going to be concerned about food and these things there, man. We know that the Lord's going to take care of us in that day, man. All right? It's all about living through faith. When the Lord set up certain men to go out and teach, he told them take no thought about what they would eat for that day, man. Because the Lord would take care of them through the Spirit. And there's many other accounts as well also where the Lord had um, fed different men that kept faith. So it's important to do what's pleasing to the Lord, which is to have faith, man. And, and, and you know, keep faith in, in and do the work of the Heavenly Father. And the last scripture I'm going to read is Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. So that's for them fallouts, man. The Lord don't have no pleasure in them. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, right? Because we believe that the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is coming back to save the elect. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Hope he was edified. To the next video. Shalom. When famine hits, the smallest suffer. There's acute malnutrition here in the country where the fighting goes on. Malnutrition is really malnutrition is really bad because it is, it has increased. Uh, I'm here for some for some years, but. This year it has really increased. This is Unity State, a rebel stronghold where a hundred thousand people now feel the effects of famine, and a million more are on the brink. <laughs> Towns have emptied. Here in the crop growing south of the country, adding to the food shortages. Thousands still cross the border every day and describe atrocities, rape and murder by soldiers from both sides. The UN's warned of the potential for genocide and now a deepening famine unless the war is stopped.